Well guys, GPUs are the most expensive part in a gaming system, so you might be thinking about buying a cheaper brand to save money. And that might actually be a good idea in some cases, but in other cases, could lead to you making a terrible choice with your build, like some have done before on the channel. So today we are covering the brand Inno 3D and uh, all the sub-brands that utilize basically the same kind of PCB and coolers and even their gaming iChill series. And I'm gonna give my honest opinion after having bought literally tens of their GPUs in all these years as a PC flipper, as a PC builder myself. So let's get started. Now Inno 3D is a company that doesn't distribute that much in Europe and not even in America that much actually. It's mostly for Asia and I know that in, in Australia is pretty popular as well. Now they are quite a lot cheaper though and they have been coming to Europe quite a bit as well so now they're for example available on the Italian Amazon as well and especially after 2021 with all the cryptocurrency boom these cars have been imported quite a lot into Italy and now it's full of 3000 series GPUs as well. I haven't seen as many RTX 4000 series GPUs so this review will be, will be based off the two RTX 4000 series cars I've tried but mostly on the RTX 3000s of which I've had literally over 10 and I've also had their absolute top of the line card the Inno 3D iChill RTX 3090 with which we've done a nice build on the channel. So in case you wanna just see this card being repasted and fixed quite a lot, you can go check out that build. We managed to squeeze in such a massive card into a tiny 45 bucks case. Now, what does go wrong hardware wise? Okay, so first stadium is gonna be this one. So the fans, okay, the fans break a lot. And this is not the same with other brands. Now I know what you guys are gonna be saying. Yes, but you bought mining cars, so they have been running worse than others. And that is a good argument. However, this Inno 3D iChill X4, which I have here, was run by a friend of mine in his personal PC for two years. So I know firsthand that he only played Apex Legends, he's a competitive player, and two of the three fans gave out. So they have problems with fans. The good thing is you can buy them on AliExpress for like super cheap. I have bought quite a few and I actually have some in storage as replacement. So anytime if somebody I sold a PC to, comes back and is like, hey, my fan, the GPU is broken. I'm like, bring it back. I will fix it for you free of charge, no problem, uh, because I know it's a problem. However, they break a lot and uh, these cars are not the easiest to take apart. So uh, we will have to differentiate and we'll start right now. So the fans are shared in the iChill and in the standard Inno 3D cars. So they don't change. They all have issues, but the iChill are much more difficult to take apart because taking off the GPU is pretty simple, just a few screws but taking off this very complex and good looking RGB heatsink on top of it is very complex. Plus the fans have different cabling, so they are not three identical fans. They are three fans with three different connectors. So for every GPU, you need to buy a pack of three. And again, it's not too expensive, but it's around 30 bucks if you wanna replace all three. You have to factor that in, and it's gonna take a few weeks for you to get the fans from China. So that's the first problem. Now, hardware-wise, I have not encountered any other difficulties. So the PCB is actually pretty decent. They are not the strongest in power delivery-wise, but the iChill is actually a great, great card PCB-wise. So they also make a Frostbite version, which can be water-cooled, and that is very good. I do actually very recommend this card, and I also recommend, in general, those PCBs if you wanna put them underwater. However, the standard Inno 3D cards, the non-iChill, a very weak PCB, so I would not recommend extreme overclocking or shunt modding or liquid metal on them. I would recommend them for just light use, but you can definitely, if you upgrade the cooler, get a good experience with them. Now, thermal pads and thermal paste, they use proprietary pads, so you won't be able to replace the pads as easily because they use 0.75 millimeters pads, which are pretty common in uh, Asian GPUs as well. I will have a video about PNY as well. I'm making this video because you guys liked a lot the video about the Zota cards. So I made a follow up about Inno 3D. But uh, yeah, thermal pad replacement can be a bit tricky, but you can actually get around that if you use spreadable thermal pads. So it's not too bad in that sense. So we covered the PCB. How is the clock, the overclocking, and the out of the box clocks? Well, the iChill series is a very strong performer. I actually 100% recommend them. They come clocked high out of the box. You can increase the power limit by quite a bit, whereas ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte are locking the power limit on their mid-range cars quite a lot, so that's good. They don't have too many power connectors and they have plenty of connectivity in the back. Plus, the X4 has a side fan which looks super cool. So I'd say there's really no difference 
clockwise or normal experience compared to the most reputable brands, nor there is in actual overclocking, memory overclocking, because again, that just depends on the chips and uh, no manufacturer makes the chips. The core is from Nvidia and the other chips are from Hynix, Samsung, Micron, all those big brands. It's not really gonna be a problem in that regards. Where we have gonna be a problem though is gonna be in the RGB software. The software is just terrible overall. Now, it's not gonna be a problem for tweaking, for tuning, because as you know on the channel, I do a lot of overclocking, undervolting guides, and I recommend you always and only use MSI Afterburner. That does work with every car, so you don't need their terrible software. You don't even need it to control the fans, you can just use Afterburner for that. So that's not a problem. However, if you wanna control the RGB, things change, because their software is terrible. But, in the case of the iChill, it comes with a 3-pin connector, so you can plug it on your motherboard, and if you do that, you can use your motherboard to control the software. So I'd say even that is not really an issue. Software support, driver support is actually pretty good. So even though the software is bad, it's very rarely updated. And it also has an inbuilt option to update the BIOS, which I find super cool. At the time when the Rebar update came out, by the way, if you have a 3000 series RTX card, be sure you install the, the new rebar bios it gives you a lot of extra performance if you enable rebar in some games full of guides online i don't have one but it's full so take a look and at the time inno 3d was very quick to release those bioses and i have installed them successfully using their software and it's super easy however documentation in general is not as vast or as specific as with msi gigabyte and those bigger brands which of course have a bit more resources in this sense last topic before we close off Temperature, cooling, overheating. The iChill cars are great. I can absolutely recommend them. Why? Because they all have the same cooler. So if you buy an iChill RTX 3060, you will have the cooler of an RTX 3090 on it, which is absolutely oversized and it's actually better than buying an MSI RTX 3060 Gaming X Trio, which is very expensive. So that's a very good buy in my opinion. However, if you're buying the Inno 3D slim versions with those tiny heat sinks, they do run a bit too hot especially the Inno3D RTX 3080 Ti, which was the slimmer RTX 3080 Ti on the market, which was just a choose lot. The only choose lot card was either that or the Founders Edition, and I was very interested in it because I had an ITX build myself in the NZXT Manta, and I had to make it fit. Well, these cards run way too hot. Plus, we already discussed about the issues with the fans. I made a few builds with those cards in case you wanna go check them out, and they actually based a few undervolt tutorial around them because they really need to be undervolted. But all in all, Inno3D, I wanna say, is a reputable brand. You can buy from them, they're good. Just uh, be sure you know what you're buying for and be prepared for the problems that come with paying a bit less upfront. Of course, if you're buying an iChill card, if it wasn't for the fan problem, I would say it's definitely a best buy, but of course we have that issue, so I have to mention it. So let me know down below if you have or if you had an Inno3D or iChill card, and if you liked it, if you encountered more problems that maybe I haven't so far, do let me know how you fix them and just tell me about it in the comments. I'm super curious about it and I wanna hear more. Also, if you watched the video this far, please drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more and see you in the next one. Bye.